three SFF cases, three air coolers, three air cooled builds for the 9800X 3D. Welcome to Machines and More. So along with the launch of the 9800X 3D, I gave an overview of the cooling needs for the new chip. It's a little bit different than the 7800X 3D that it supersedes. The thermal transfer with the new one is better, but the power draw is also higher. So the takeaway from that investigation was you need a 240 or higher tier air cooler to take advantage, uh, the full advantage of what of the chip has to offer. Uh, strictly gaming only, you probably can get by with some smaller coolers though. So today we're going to look specifically at three SFF cases, specifically air cooled builds, uh, three different size tiers. And the intent here isn't necessarily to show you, you know, A is better than B is better than C or whatever, but uh, just to give you an idea of how we can navigate and uh, maximize the performance within the three uh, different cooling limitations that we have here in each case. And I also wanted to highlight that you really don't need to spend a lot uh, on your cooler. 4090X3. So I'm using just three thermal right coolers here. They did send by a few of these coolers for review, but they're not sponsoring this video. They just happen to be one of the best brands right now for price to performance. So I'm happy to show you these guys here. So I'll tell you about our video sponsor shortly, but let's take a look at the Cooler Master NR200 first. This is the Caribbean Blue Edition. Here I've gone with the Asus X70 main board. You don't need this high end of a board for the 9800X3, but if you appreciate a good board, this one is solid and it's completely overbuilt. Power supply I have here is the Cooler Master SFX 1100 watt. This is the standard in your kind of upper tier SFF size bracket, 18 inch liters. One of the best thermal performers are highly versatile and it has a spec cool height of 155 millimeters. But here I've stretched it a little bit. This is the new Peerless Assassin 140 wide edition and uh it has a 140 millimeter fan and a 120 millimeter fan if you find that your case won't close uh, you can just secure the side panels with two screws this may be pretty close you know for some of you it's gonna be hit or miss this one is a top tier cooler without a top tier price no doubt will cool the 9800x 3d i did want to benchmark and show you what best in class air cooled sff goodness looks like and this will set a good baseline here. The GPU I'm using is ASUS's Tough 4070 Super. It's a thicker card as it relates to SFF, but we'll be using this one across all of our three builds. This is a good looking build, isn't it? If you need a chair to sit in while you admire your new NKS M2 or NR200 or Fractal Terra build, let me tell you about our sponsor today. I'm sitting in FlexiSpot's OC6 ergonomic chair. It is one heck of an office chair, whether it's for gaming or for work, or if gaming happens to be your work, the BIF MA certified mesh fabric for this seat. It'll help you stay cool while keeping you properly supported for long sessions. It's got a 500 pound capacity and they've tested this one to withstand impacts of 110 pounds for 400,000 times. Uh, FlexiSpot offers a 10 year warranty on this chair, so they stand by that durability as well. So for proper posture and customization, the OC6 has a Y-shaped lumbar support. There is also an adjustable headrest, so you can position this as a neck or head support. You've got two depth settings for the seat, 90 to 130 degrees of seat recline, four dimensions of armrest adjustments, and of course, seat height adjustment here. In addition to the customizability, installation was not complicated. It rolls around smoothly and all the touch points are fantastically intuitive. It's really easy to keep clean and the chair just feels good to roll around and sit in and maintain. I have the black one here and it's also available in gray. The OC6 goes well with their awesome standing desks as well. So if you are watching this close to when the video goes live, Definitely check it out because they're having their Black Friday promotion now. So go ahead and check them out with their link down below. Big thanks to them for sponsoring us today. Okay, so NR200, full boost on the CPU clocks for gaming in both GPU limited or CPU limited scenarios. Both are absolutely fine and this system is very, very quiet. And that's one of the advantages of going bigger, cooler than you really need. It's not as if the PA140 uh, costs a tremendous amount more than smaller coolers. Thermorite has absolutely been destroying it with how good and cost effective their coolers are, and this is really crazy. From what I've seen here with this cooler, this is D15 level stuff. All right, next up is our new NK M2. I did a similar build with the 7800X3D with the same cooler, 
different board. The advantage of this case is the modularity and we can shift the board up and down. We can invert it and that's what I've done here. This is an inverted build with the board that's been shifted to allow the GP fans to get as close to the top panel as is reasonable. And inversion here allows the card to draw air from the top where things are more open versus the bottom, which is more choked off. And I'm setting this one up here with an SFX LPSU. This is ASUS's low-key 750 watt unit. It's really nice cable set here and uh, ASUS's X670E-I board, which you also do not need for the 9800X 3D. The cooler here is the Peerless Assassin 120 Mini, which will still allow the side panel to be used as well. So the uh, side panel fan bracket. Uh, so the cooler, it's uh, working as a rear intake here and uh, I'm exhausting with the side panel fan. That side panel fan will also help with GPU performance. So let's add this one to the mix. See here, CPU temps are fine and we're still getting the same full boost clocks for the heavy CPU all-core render. The attempts between the NR200 setup and the NK72 are pretty similar here. In terms of the boost clocks, we're not cooling limited by either setup, but the fan speeds on the NR200 setup is gonna run quieter, and this is gonna be lower compared to the PON20 Mini, which for a single fan cooler, it's still impressive how good the PON20 Mini is. Uh, with a single fan here, you can expect higher noise due to the higher RPMs. For both gaming scenarios, full boost here, very comfortable temps, and the noise, it's not going to be a huge factor. Although I will say this fan does have a very slightly less pleasing noise profile, and you may notice that noise still. And last but not least, uh, well, at least for the cooler size, this one is one of my favorites. Uh, it's the Fractal Tear. It's a very space efficient little case, just a fun build here. Now, I showed some results with this case in the 9800X 3D cooling video. And even if you're using the Noctua 12, 12 s by 77 in the biggest CPU cooler configuration, which really limits your GPU choices, you should expect a performance hit for an all core heavy load. And for this build, I switched over to another cooler that many of you mentioned. This is Thermal Rights AXP 90 uh, X47 full copper. Really unique low profile cooler, and it only has a 92 millimeter fan instead of the bigger fans that are bigger builds. Uh, used. Uh, this does give you a lot more GPU room though for this case and the other side of the house I'm using the same card able to fit that tough card and even though it's a three slot card about 63 millimeters thick I'm able to set up the case in position six and that gives us a little bit more breathing room on both sides. Uh, with this case you do want to try to avoid having the fans too close to either of the fluted side panels and uh, that way you can avoid turbulent noise that may be present with your fans being too close. And here I have five millimeters on the CPU side and the GPU cooler has about 10 millimeters away from the fan, so that's a good amount of space. I have the 9800X3 in the MSI B650i and the Lian Li SP750 power supply here. One single fan, which I highly recommend doing in this case as well. Let's take a look at the stock results here first. This cooler is gonna be one of the best ones in this size range, but still, for the all-core process, we are hitting the thermal throttle temp and the power is reduced to about 120 watts, which is a quite a bit lower than the 140 to 150 watts that we could be seeing without a cooling limitation. The clocks here drop to about 4.9 gigahertz. And like I mentioned, the Noctua 12 s by 77 basically represents the upper bound for what you can expect in this case. In that scenario, the CPU ran about 100 megahertz faster. So if you are thinking of doing anything workstation related, just take note. Uh, gaming, though, as we saw in the previous cooling video, is not going to be an issue for the Noctua 12 s by 77 here. You will be totally fine as well. <laughs> this is a much better cooler than the minuscule IS-30 that I kind of showed the extreme uh, with. The gaming temps here are actually absolutely fine. Of course, do take note that the little fan in conjunction with the vastly higher RPM that you're going to need on this fan is going to result in much higher noise, higher pitch noise if that bothers you. And the GPU temps in this case are also very, very good. The case does have a very direct intake path directly from the side panel. No filters there. And that's uh, going to be pretty comparable to what the inverted M2 has as well. Of course, the NR200, you can't adjust the position of the GPU. That's going to also draw through a filtered bottom panel there. One thing you can do though, and I do recommend at least trying it out, 
is Curve Optimizer, and that's a dynamic undervolt that you can do with uh, AMD CPUs. Now, we're not strictly overclocking beyond the CPU's stock frequency limits, but we are overclocking relative to the stock voltage to frequency curve. And what that does is ask the CPU, hey, can you run a little bit higher for the same given voltage and power? And if you set it in conjunction with a power limit, here I used 120 watts, uh, since that appeared to be the most power that we can throw into this cooler here. And you can, in fact, see fire serve clocks. This is a negative 15 offset for all cores. We're not losing much performance anymore, uh, about 100 megahertz versus what you could expect versus the bigger cases. We're still boosting up to the roughly the same package power, and we're still gonna hit that 95 degree hard limit, but this is about 200 megahertz better than stock, right? So it's nothing to scoff at. Uh, it's still a pretty big improvement. And even for gaming, you can see some thermal benefits translating to lower noise in those scenarios. The difficulty of making this type of recommendation is your silicon may, may vary. So I don't wanna, you know, make you angry that you can't get yours to minus 15 on all cores because you know, this guy on YouTube uh, said it would work uh, type of thing. But look, most chips that I've tested since Ryzen 5000 and I test a lot of CPUs, they could run minus 15 and the worst of them could still run minus 10. And that was stable for all processes. Minus 25, minus 30 is possible, but I think minus 10, minus 15, that's my conservative estimate. So given that experience, if you do a little tuning, I think actually this build could be quite serviceable as a gaming heavy uh, occasional or light workstation type of machine. Of course, you could do the same with our two bigger builds. Absolutely, you can still try the curve optimizer as well, but it's just that you don't strictly need to for those builds. Whereas with the Terra, at least in this configuration, I'd say definitely give it a shot and see how far you can get and see what kind of improvement you can get. So we've looked at these three builds. If I could pick one setup and kind of mix and match the main components that I've shown here, so that would be the NKSM2 setup with the PA120 Mini plus the MSI B650i. And the reason here is that the M2 plus PA120 Mini combo is gonna be the smallest no compromise solution, uh, at least out of these three here with the 9800X 3D. And it's gonna to be towards the higher end of pricing, but the material quality and configurability is well worth it. Uh, PA120 Mini, however, is not an expensive cooler. And relatively speaking, the MSI B650i is more on the affordable end for AM5 ITX. Uh, absolutely sufficient though to drive the CPU because you don't need a higher end board necessarily just for the performance reasons. There's no big difference there. It's got good IO options. And I've been recommending this board uh, for a while and I use the board a lot and it's never missed a beat except uh, when I you know, reach behind and uh, accidentally clear CMOS because that button is way too uh, proud. <laughs> but that's a, a story for a different day. So yeah, that'll wrap things up. I hope you enjoyed these three builds. Uh, it's always fun playing around with uh, your favorite SFF cases, right? So please make sure you subscribe. If you enjoy SFF content like this, please give a like. Full build list uh, for the components and links are down below. Big thanks for watching. <music>